Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of Wesley Live. I am very excited to have Dr. Aaron Wilkinson with us today. Dr. Wilkinson, I'm sure all of you already know uh, Dr. Wilkinson, but he is the VP of Enrollment and Operations at Wesley Seminary. He's also an adjunct faculty member and a man of many talents and so excited that he's with us today. So Dr. Wilkinson, I know you've done research on staff resiliency and you manage a staff yourself there, as I said, at the seminary with enrollment and operations. So could you share some of the research that you've done with us? I know we may have pastors watching or those that have other staff that are working remotely and uh, resiliency in our staff right now is very critical. So would love to hear uh, some of the research information you have to share with us today. Yeah, absolutely, Joel. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to do this. I do want to share with um, anyone out there who's leading a staff at this point, uh, as you're distributed, um, it, these could be hard times. People are, are probably struggling uh, mentally. They're struggling because their routine isn't the way they're, they're used to having it. Um, communication might feel harder at these times than just walking down to somebody's office. So there's a lot of reasons why resiliency might dip at a period of time like this. But there are some things that, that leaders can do as you're leading a staff that can increase the resilience uh, of your employees. The research that, that I've done shows that those who engage in servant leadership behaviors uh, increase the resiliency of their employees. So I looked at a couple things like conceptual skills, empowerment, helping employees grow and succeed, putting subordinates first, and creating value for the community. And all of those things were shown to help increase the resilience of employees. At this time, um, I think the things that we could focus on as leaders that would have the greatest impact right now would be helping subordinates grow and succeed. Now, what that really means in the context of the study I did was that we are, as leaders, are showing our, uh, our employees, our staff members, that we are invested in their growth and in their future. So if there's anything you can do at this point that to show your employees that you're invested in their future, because a lot of people are feeling nervous about their future right now, that will have a direct impact on their resilience. In fact, the, the study that I did shows that it could impact uh, an individual's resilience up to 11 and a half percent, which may not feel like a huge amount. You might want to hear numbers like 50 or 60 or 75 percent, but, but think about if you could help someone feel just 10 percent better today. That's one way that you could do that. Now, another thing that might actually be a great opportunity um, right now is the ability to provide empowerment to your, to your staffs as they are distributed they may need to make calls related to their work um, and they may not have the opportunity to have the conversation that they would normally have with you. If you are able to empower them, provide them uh, with the trust and belief and say, I, go ahead, make the call when you need to make the call. Um, here, here, I empower you to do that. I am allowing you to have additional access or additional permissions or simply saying, just, just follow up with me. I know that you're going to be able to take care of this. Let me know how you did it and, and follow up with them afterwards. Empowerment could also increase a person's resilience almost uh, 11 and a half percent. Though, um, helping them, uh, subordinates grow and succeed and empowerment were the two strongest things that came out of the study I did. So if, if there's a way for you to empower your employees at this point, that is really going to help them feel better as they're working from home, as they're distributed and feeling like they're not empowered. They're, they're feeling distress. Uh, another thing that you could do as a leader um, is putting subordinates first. So in our study, uh, it, it came out at about eight and a half percent that that could impact uh, a person's resilience. It is easy in this time to feel very reactive, that this is the thing I got to do, and this is the next thing I got to do, and this is the next thing I got to do. And, and you can become very focused on your personal to-do list. But connecting with your employees and asking, what can I do to make your job easier right now? How can I help you complete the task that is difficult for you to complete because we're not in our normal routine? putting them first and letting them know that you are valuing their work above even the work you need to do at the moment 
will also help them feel additionally empowered. So as a, just by being um, a servant leader and engaging in those behaviors, you could increase uh, resilience by a total of maybe around uh, 18% for, for uh, an employee. Um, when I say 11 and a half for one, 11 and a half for another, eight and a half for, for another, those don't all combine to end up in the 30s. It's, you know, as they start to lay on top of each other, as, as you can hear, I'm talking about putting subordinates first and empowering them. Those things go together, uh, helping subordinates grow and succeed and empowering them. Those things go together, helping subordinates grow and succeed and putting subordinates first. Uh, those things go together. So they, they kind of overlap and give you a stronger and stronger ability uh, for your employees regarding resilience. So those are a couple of things that you could put in place. Now, I can't tell you exactly what you need to do to empower your staff right now. I can't tell you exactly what you need to do to help your staff feel as if you're putting them and their work above even your own at this moment. I, don't, I can't tell you exactly what to do to help your staff feel as if you're valuing their future in this uncertain time. You can contextualize that to your own uh, personal situation, your own organizational situation. Um, but if you think about those three things, how can you implement just one of them this week with each of your staff so that they feel more resilient in this distressing time? I think that um, they would all uh, be highly appreciative. That's great information, Aaron. I really appreciate that. And I can speak for you. I've seen it firsthand. I mean, you're talking about putting others first. I mean, it's just textbook biblical leadership. And I am so blessed to be able to see that on a daily basis from you, from Dr. Durr, Dr. Joseph. Uh, it's just a great place to work. And I want to thank you for that. Aaron, right now, approximately how many staff members do you manage on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, uh, personally, I'm managing somewhere around uh, eight, but the reality is the seminary is a staff of 25 right now, right. and uh, all of us on the executive leadership team interact with everybody. Um, so I have the opportunity to help uh, faculty who, who don't report to me. I, I have ways that I can uh, try and help them feel more resilient as well. This isn't, uh, even though they're, they're used to teaching online, it isn't like this is um, a hundred percent routine for them. So uh, there are ways that I'm trying to engage with them as well. Uh, and, and much of that is just relationship building, letting people know that you're there for them. Uh, yeah. So, you know, as we are the term, as, as Tammy mentioned in our most recent Facebook live, um, I understand and don't want to fight with the term social distancing because I want people to employ it, but it is much more physical distancing and social connectedness is what we need at this point. So, um, just being, just being connected, uh, to one another, uh, I think helps us all feel better at this time. Amen. Amen. Well, Aaron, I really appreciate your time. I know you're very busy, but I thank you for coming on and sharing this information with us today. And, uh, if you have anything in the future that you'd want to share, be glad to uh, have that on a, at another time as well. So thank you very much. Thank you everybody for watching. We hope you're having a, a safe day. Hope you're staying healthy. And remember, we are Wesley and you belong here. Have a great day. Blessings.